Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. Where it's taken from our Holy Gospel today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Last week, having considered that negative purpose of Lent, that of atonement for our sins, the avoidance of purgatory, today we will consider another positive purpose for Lent, seeing Lent as a time to make our souls that good soil from the gospel, time to hear God better and to prepare for what he wants us to do. But even this positive direction for Lent depends on how well we use our penance to clear the ground from thorns and weeds. In addition to controlling our vice and making satisfaction for sins, St. Thomas says that we have recourse to fasting in order that the mind may arise more freely to the contemplation of heavenly things. We see this quite clearly in the Gospel parable for today. The weeds, earthly cares and attachments, overindulgence, especially in food and drink, weigh the mind down and clutter the soul, make it hard for those seeds that God plants in us to have nourishment. Our prayers are then small and weak, and struggle to compete against so many worldly entertainments and distractions. Thankfully, we have a great remedy for this in the Church's Lenten practices, albeit from centuries ago. The most ancient Christian practice for Lent was to take only one meal daily, and this after sunset. Originally, it included no flesh meat and nothing that came from such animals, no eggs, milk, or cheese. In the ninth century already, this meal began to be anticipated to the hour of noon, to around 3 p.m., and even earlier after that. Later, the use of two collations, snacks, if you will, were permitted to help one sustain his strength throughout the day. Now, in addition to this fasting, and more to our point today, again, for hundreds of years, all amusements and theatrical entertainments were forbidden, as well as hunting, war, and law courts. The celebration of marriages was forbidden, and the use of marriage was forbidden to those who were married. Now, over the centuries, unfortunately, all of these salutary proscriptions began to be mitigated or lost entirely. In the 20th century before the Council, there were so many exemptions to the fast, the only proscription remaining, that it seems that there must have been far more people exempt from the precept than those who were obligated. Now, some, I would hope many, saw this as a problem, and some sought to solve it by simply getting rid of, getting rid of the laws, seeing them as outdated. Let us choose differently. Again, I say, go big this Lent. Let us strive to return to strict fasts and deprivations, never forgetting why, as penance, but also as discipline. Penance is regard with regard to the past, a way of paying back. Discipline focuses on the future. Discipline coming from the Latin word discere, to learn, from which we get disciple and discern. Our penances, then, should be used to help us learn, to help us discern the will of God for us. To do this, to do this effectively, we must have mental fasting to go with our bodily fast. Again, the older church knew this, hence those prohibitions of entertainments during Lent. We should mortify our flesh, we should also mortify our minds. St. Francis de Sales says, It is not enough to fast exteriorly if we do not fast interiorly and if we do not accompany the fast of the body with that of the spirit. TV, movies, music, social media sites, these are all excellent things to either do away with entirely for Lent, or to severely restrain. But I also suggest here something that may seem innocuous, 
reading or watching the news. The world will go on if you stop following the news for Lent. Even, and perhaps especially, the ecclesiastical news. We will gain great spiritual benefits from Lent if we are strict about our disciplines. Again, St. Francis de Sales says that such fasting disposes the heart to seek to please only God with great purity of heart. Our fast must be universal, he adds. It must be of both body and spirit. By employing the Church's more ancient disciplines, those of both body and mind, by taking advantage of that extra time for Mass, devotions, and more personal prayer, we create a fertile ground in our soul. Lent is then a time to be careless with ourselves and worldly things so that we can care more for God and the things of heaven. As we said last week, Lent is indeed oriented towards the past as a means of self-punishment, of atonement for our sins. But it is also a great means of preparation for our future. What does God want to give us or tell us this Lent? How will we ever know if we don't try? You have to empty your hands of one thing to receive another. You have to be silent first before you can listen. You may have to put down the news, the internet, the TV to receive the seed God wants to plant in your soul or to let it grow, the one that he has planted there already. You may not have sinned at all in these things. There may be no atonement needed. The giving up such entertainments frees time more for prayer and silence with God and unclutters the mind. Because it is more positive, too, it is often less hard to do once you are used to it. Other penances, like taking cold showers, are always unpleasant. But once you get used to more silence and longer prayer, you may easily come to love it, to deepen your love for God and your complete dependence on Him in every aspect of your life. So both the negative and positive aspects of Lent are important. Fasting, hard disciplines, help us let go of detachment of attachment to the world, to its pleasures. Decreased entertainments and increased prayer help us attach to God. Fasting without prayer will pretty much only increase natural virtue and discipline. It will do little for our souls. But when combined together, prayer with the fasting helps the spirit rise more quickly to God and to hold on to him tighter. Even if this Lent doesn't produce instant results, doesn't give us the immediate answers we seek to the questions that we're asking, doesn't reveal to us God's plan for our lives, it will always help us to prepare for a holy death, which we know is God's plan for each one of us. So it will do us well then, this Lent, to consider our death. Who do you want to be when you're 85, lying alone in a nursing home bed? Do you need to have the TV blaring on to drown out the silence? Or do you lay there, coming in and out of consciousness, praying when you can, offering up your sufferings to Christ? When you die, you get cut off more and more from the enjoyments and entertainments of this world. If you do not have good habits of prayer by then, what will become of you? We close again with the warning that all, all of our penances must be done in charity. St. Alphonsus Liguori says, There are some religious who perform a great many exercises of devotion who practice frequent communion, long meditations, fasting, and other corporal austerities, but make no effort to overcome certain little passions, for example, certain resentments, aversions, curiosity, and dangerous affections. 
They will not submit to any contradiction. They will not give up attachment to certain persons, nor subject their will to the commands of their superiors or to the holy will of God. St. Francis de Sales says, If your fast is without humility, it is worth nothing and cannot be pleasing to the Lord. So let us beseech the aid of our Blessed Mother Mary. Let us beseech her help, both in planning for our Lent and then in carrying it out. She who spent 15 years in perfect but unknowing preparation to receive the greatest gift, the greatest seed God could ever plant in a human being, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with the Father in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.